Good evening. Would you take your hymnals with me to turn to number 441, 441. Would you stand with me as we sing Sunlight in My Soul. I want, I, is that the right song? I don't think so. 441. Uh-oh. No, you know what? Janice was right. Wow. And this is her last night with us. Not because she's right. Let's go to uh, 323. 323. Standing on the promises. 323. Standing on the promises. singing tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us a, a wonderful evening, Lord. Thank you for being such a great God. Lord, I thank you for giving us your word. I pray that uh, as uh, we hear it um, presented to us this evening, Lord, I pray that our hearts would be uh, willing to uh, listen and to change so that we can be more like you. God, I thank you so much for what you're going to do in this service. I pray that everything would be honoring and glorifying to you. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. As uh, you can uh, tell, pastor is away. He is on vacation. Uh, he will be gone this week and um, uh, this Wednesday, Sunday, and the following Wednesday. He'll be back following weekend so we uh, look forward to just uh, keeping on keeping on while he's gone and uh, looking forward to seeing what God has for us this evening would you turn with me please to number 78 that is indeed the right song number 78 when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be let's sing that first together sing the wondrous love of Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in
sing that last together. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be born. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. This evening's uh, missionary message is from the Rogers uh, Rock of Ages Ministries. Dear pastors, churches, and friends, our heart is filled with thanksgiving for the many years of ministry for our supporting churches and our friends who hold us up in prayer and remember us even from our years back. July 31st through August 4th is our Rock of Ages National Conference, which will be held in Murfreesboro, Tennessee at the Franklin Road Baptist Church. This year, Virginia and I will be awarded our 25th year award for serving 25 years with the Rock of Ages. The attendance is still good in the prison services with men coming forward at the end of profession of faith and led to Christ. After the men are led to the Lord, we encourage them to seek the Lord and start our lessons. This is why we provide our Bible Institute lessons and the Rock of Ages study Bible. Their first visit to the Rock of Ages 25 years ago was a nice older building sitting on one acre of land. Now the property sits on over 100 acres of land. A man wrote in a testimony how God brought him out so much filth and sin that he first brought him to prison. He expressed by coming to prison he felt alive and sincerely rescued. Then he was saved and continued our lessons, as he continued in the lessons, he began to feel cleaner and cleaner. He wrote he was able to meet in my service on Tuesday and hear the word of God each week and how this helped him so much, his heart and his mind. All of this caused him to sit down and write a six-page letter, front and back, and mail it to the office of the Rock of Ages. Others have written these types of testimonies. I've been blessed to be part of the ministry that is truly making a difference. A man in class the other day gave a testimony about being woke up at 4 a.m. by a man leaving that day who came to give him a new pair of boots. He said he was different as he worked on his lessons and faithfully attended my class and was there to answer his questions when he needed help. The older man was in tears. His shoes were so worn. Rock of Ages lessons make a dis difference to the older man. His difference was a good witness to the man leaving. The new shoes sure made a difference. In our 25 years, we have sought to get answers for the men who needed help and have prayed to make a difference. Pray with us. Thank you for helping us, Wendell and Virginia. That's great. If you would, take your uh, prayer bulletin. Anybody need a prayer guide? Everybody got one? Very good. <coughs> we start in the back. And uh, see our coming events. We do have uh, CRC tomorrow at uh, uh, Are You Inside tomorrow at CRC, and then also um, Reformers Unanimous on Friday, as well as uh, Are You Inside at the London uh, Prison on Saturday. Um, Saturday morning soul winning bus visitation is uh, usual, and then. Um, don't want to miss Sunday. Sunday morning is going to be a just a or Sunday day is going to be a great time. We'll have uh, evangelist Gary Mann he's from um, I believe he's out of Longview Baptist Church there in Texas, and uh, just a neat guy, um, a great preacher, and uh, you'll you'll be blessed. I'm I'm certain. Um, uh, tonight we get to hear from um, Brother Yoder, and uh, looking forward to that. And next week we get to hear from Brother Moreland, and. Uh, Make sure and be back for that, too. And it'll be a good time. I'm sure we'll hear much about the last uh, couple months. And uh, just uh, really looking forward to that. Um, look forward to the 7th of August. Uh, it's the Higher Ground Offering. And uh, 
going to go towards the uh, carpet and the lights and uh, just uh, a lot of things we need to do to just kind of update things a little bit, uh, be good stewards of what God's given us, um, uh, make the uh, auditorium here look uh, presentable and uh, save a boatload of money on the lights. And uh, so if you uh, pray about what the Lord would have you to give there, um, we're asking the Lord for about $10,000 for that project. And um, as Pastor said, Sunday night, um, somebody has uh, offered a matching gift of uh, up to $5,000 for anything that comes in for that offering. So uh, be praying about uh, your part <coughs> in that. Um, if you open up to the inside, see the praise report. So we did have uh, 21 at CRC last Thursday. Um, four saved. That was exciting. And then um, last Saturday, 17 there at the prison on s uh, in London there on Saturday. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, last Wednesday, we were praying for uh, Vicki Vaughn and her uh, cancer. The Lord gave her uh, two months. And um, Friday, she came in and uh, into RU, and uh, I'm, I'm certain she had a few inches in between her feet and the floor. Um, but uh, she was uh, just really on cloud nine. Uh, her oncologist called her and said that uh, she's never in 40 years of practice seen this. So she has no cancer cells in her body. And so we praise the Lord for that. Um, the uh, prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Amen. And we do indeed serve a great physician who uh, knows us an awful lot better than we know ourselves. So we're, we're grateful for that. Um, so that's a praise. Uh, Brother Moreland, home, that's a, that's a praise even. And uh, we're, we're grateful for that. Um, but uh, continue to pray uh, for those on the health list. Uh, uh, Diane Stiltner, um, be, be praying for her. Uh, she thinks she might be going home soon. Um, every, all the tests and everything are coming back uh, uh, well. It's uh, just having a hard time keeping things down and not being nauseated. So uh, there's still a uh, few issues they're working out, but she thinks she might be able to do that from home. So uh, be praying for uh, Diane and the doctors to have wisdom uh, regarding that. Continue to pray for uh, Mrs. Moreland as uh, she's still recovering from her appendectomy and uh, uh, the remainder of those requests there. Um, also, those uh, in authority, um, let's not forget uh, those that uh, the Lord's put over us here in this country and, um, and be praying that they will have uh, wisdom um, beyond their, even their own understanding. And um, I pray for those on the cancer list and the salvation list. Uh, salvation list just keeps growing, but uh, just because it keeps growing doesn't mean that those things are uh, minimalized, all right? So keep praying for those things, as well as the unreached people groups. Um, I don't know if you've, uh, uh, if how, how much you pay attention to these unreached people groups, but since we started this, um, has it been almost two years, I think, we've we started putting the unreached people groups in here, 10 at a time, every week, and we've never repeated them. In fact, we're only in the C's as far as the countries go. That's how it's, uh, how I've got them sorted. And we're in the CAs. We just got into the Cs. There's a lot of unreached people groups. And so just keep, keep praying for these. And uh, I, I just hope that as you look at them and you see them, that the uh, Lord will just really burden you. And uh, maybe the Lord will burden you for one particular people group. And uh, that'll be what uh, your, is your, uh, your goal in life there, is to reach that group. Uh, be praying for the missionaries, uh, particularly, you know, we'll highlight the Rock of Ages uh, prison ministry, and uh, appreciate the Rogers and what they are doing there. Brother Moreland, are you awake enough to come and pray and uh, lead us in prayer tonight? Appreciate your being back. It's exciting to see your smiling face. Pray for us, if you would, brother. All right, our gracious Heavenly Father, 
We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. And, Lord, we just thank you for a time that we can come into your church and just worship you and give you full glory and praise. Lord, we ask that you'll be with the pastor and Kathy and their families, Lord, as they're just taking some time and having a little bit of vacation, just getting some time away. Lord, we just ask that you'll give them safety, give them some relaxation, Lord, that they'll come back and um, just be ready to continue to do the work. Lord, I um, ask that you be with those here with their health, Lord, that you'll just um, be with them, be with the doctors and the medical teams that are working with them. Also, be, just be with them and their families, Lord, and um, lift them up. And uh, just, Lord, just be, uh, give the wisdom to the doctors to be able to deal with uh, whatever problems that are arising, whatever's going on, Lord, that um, that these people can, can uh, feel better, and Lord, um, just bring them back to us. Lord, we um, thank you for our church ministries, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to be able to serve, serve you and serve the church, Lord, to be able to tell others about your sweet salvation, what you did on that cross, Lord. Lord, the opportunities that you give us, sometimes we... Um, let go aside, Lord, just please put it in our hearts to see the opportunities, to be able to see the, um, the need, Lord, and just what, what you've done for us, Lord, that we can share it with others. And, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing with the RU ministry and within the prisons. Lord, we ask that you'll be with each and every one of those men that have accepted you as Lord and as their Savior. Lord, that when they come out, Lord, they'll come out new and refreshed and Lord, be able to start a new life, and for those that have to stay, Lord, that they'll be able to reach others within the prison and show them who you are. Lord, we ask that you'll be with those that we've been praying for salvation. Lord, each and every one of us knows somebody that does not know you, or, and uh, Lord, we just ask that you'll be with them and open up their hearts to see who you really are. Lord, we thank you for uh, Sister Vaughn, and Lord, we just know you do Lord, we just depend on miracles. We, we live with your miracles, Lord. Every day we see miracles. And, Lord, you gave us another one through Vicki. And, Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we ask that you be with her. And, and, Lord, what a wonderful time this is to be able to share the gospel with the doctors and the medical team has been working with her for so long. And uh, they might not be able to understand it right now, but, Lord, as you open up their hearts and let them see, Lord, who you really are. So, Lord, we ask that you'll be with these other ones that are dealing with cancer, and we know it's hard on them and hard on the families. Lord, we just ask that you'll be with them and uh, just guide them and help them through this. Lord, we ask that you be with those that are, that are in our military serving. Lord, we ask that you'll be with them and give them safety. Lord, we ask that you'll be with our government. Lord, we know the elections are coming soon, and Lord, we ask that you'll give us the right one who you want us to have. Lord, we know that you are in control. We know that you will put the ones in there that, that you need done. I've already read at the end of the book, we know who has a victory. Right. And, Lord, we just ask that you'll just uh, guide them and uh, give us the right ones, Lord, to keep this country going. And, uh, Lord, we are looked around the world as um, higher power and, as, and uh, political views and so forth, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask that you'll keep that going and just help us to be able to help others. And, Lord, we ask that you'll be with um, the Rogers family and the Rock of Ages and be with uh, the missionaries, Lord, that we support, the missionaries that are coming in for this um, next missions conference. Lord, what an exciting time and one of the uh, greatest times of the year, Lord, is our missions conference. So, Lord, we ask that you'll be with them, be with them on the field, um, be with those that are serving and uh, those that are traveling, those missionaries that are traveling back and forth and Lord, it's a, it's a great life. It's a blessed life to be able to serve you in any kind of ministry. And it's a great life to be able to serve you on the mission field. So, Lord, we just ask that you'll be with them and keep their hearts open and uh, keep a heart for the people that they're ministering to. We know it's hard, but, Lord, sometimes we just we need to get refreshed. And, uh, Lord, we just need you in every moment of every day. Lord, we ask that you'll be with these unreached people groups that we have talked about. Lord, there's so many, and we've been doing this for two years, and we're only in the seas. Lord, there's so many that just need to hear who you are, hear about your grace and your mercy and your love. Lord, please don't let us be so hard-hearted and so far in our comfort zone that we just miss out, miss out on you 
and the blessings that you've given us, Lord. Now it's our responsibility to go out and reach those. Now, Lord, we ask that you be with Brother Reed as he continues to minister music. And, Lord, be with Brother Yoder and use him as, an, as your instrument to speak to our hearts tonight. Give him the power that he needs to to preach. Yes. And, Lord, help us stay focused and help us just to um, see who you really are and who we are. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for everything that you've done. Lord, thank you for letting me be back with my church family tonight. Lord, how I love them and I missed them. Lord, I love you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, I'd like to welcome any visitors we might have tonight. If this is your uh, first time here at a Bible Baptist, or maybe first time in a long time, we'd like to uh, find out who you are, where you're from. If you just slip your hand up, I'd appreciate it. Back row, very back. Can you introduce yourself and your family? Fantastic. Great to have you. Great to have you. Wonderful. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's great to have you, Trey. And it's great to see you, Amber. Wonderful. Good to have you. Fantastic. Anybody else? Doesn't look like it. That's great. All right. Well, let's give these folks a warm welcome, all right? All right. Well, 538 is uh, where we're going to uh, go today, this evening. 538. Let's all stand together. And we're going to sing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. On that first together. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty. one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
Redeemer, Savior, friend of men, once ruined by the foe, thou hast devised salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. As you find your seats, please, let's sing that last together. His name shall be the Counselor, the Mighty Prince of Peace. On that last, His name shall be the Counselor, the Mighty Prince of Peace. The kingdom's conqueror whose reign shall never cease blessed be the name blessed be the name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name blessed be the name blessed be the name of the And you may be seated as the ushers come to take up the evening offering. All right. Brother Taylor? Hey, let us pray. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you for your love and your mercy and the blessings that you bestow on not only Bible Baptist Church, but those that still love you, Lord, and around the world. And the miracles that you see, you perform, Lord, still doing it. Father, as we take up this offering now, may it be pleasing to you. And Father, just uh, be with the preacher as he brings the word and be with us tonight. Help us be attentive, Lord, and hear what the, you'd have for us tonight. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. on the sparrow and I know he watches me well I tell you what he sure has watched over our church these last uh, few weeks allowing uh, the Callahans to be here it's been a real blessing to have uh, Mrs. Callahan and Catherine um, with our pianist having a baby she just wasn't able to play at the same time she was having a baby <laughs> so uh, the Lord just knew that and uh, was able to uh, allow the Callahans to be here for the exact month that we needed. And so we're just really grateful for that. This is their last service with us, though. They're leaving out bright, well, dark and early Saturday morning. 
And so uh, make sure and say your final goodbyes, final hugs, etc. cetera, um, this evening. But uh, we're looking forward to hearing Brother Yoder tonight, our um, missionary with 1040 International. And uh, Brother Yoder, come on, give us what the Lord's got for you. Tell him, Mike. Amen. Well, thanks for coming tonight. I hope this will be a blessing to you. I sure do want to thank the pastor for allowing me to come uh, and preach in his place tonight here at his pulpit. Please turn in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to start off reading a few verses and we'll use that as a springboard tonight. Uh, I'll start off a little bit teachy and then I'll preach a little bit right at the end. First Corinthians chapter 3 and we'll begin reading with verse 8. Verse 8, the Bible says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you for giving me the health to stand here tonight in front of these people. What a blessing that is. But Lord, as we speak about things concerning eternity, I pray that we would be serious and think on your word. So I'd ask Holy Spirit that you would talk to their hearts as I speak and preach to their ears. Uh, do what I cannot do. Help them in their Christian lives tonight. Thank you now and I give you all the praise and glory ahead of time. I love you very much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Here in chapter 3 in 1 Corinthians, we're talking about the judgment of the believers. Now this thing about uh, there's a general judgment and there's a big scale up in heaven and everybody's works are put on one side, the bad works on one side, the good works on the other, and if the good outweigh the bad, you go to heaven. We know from the Bible that that's not true. Uh, the fatherhood of God and sonship of man, that's not true. The Bible says... Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we're talking primarily to Christians tonight, and this is the judgment of the believers. Now, that is not the main point of what I'm going to be preaching on tonight, but this is where we're going to start. Now, here at this judgment... It has three main purposes to gain uh, things that you have done for your labor here for our Lord. Again, we're not talking about working our way to heaven. It's impossible to uh, erase your own sin, and because we're all sinners, we all deserve to die and go to hell. But if you've received that free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and you've been saved, if you've been born again, amen, or as they say down in West Virginia, if you've been born again, uh, then you'll go to heaven, not because of your works. But here we have a judgment that is specifically for works, for the labor that you've done for the Lord. Then for the position that you'll receive during the millennial reign. That this church and the Bible teaches 
of the premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. The next thing on God's calendar is his rapture, and after the rapture, he takes the church, all the believers with him into heaven, and then there'll be a seven-year period where we have the tribulation here on earth. During that time is when this judgment of the believers takes place. But when that period of time is over, then we will come back and rule and reign with Jesus Christ on this earth. But the thing is, we're not going to all be the same positionally. You'll receive your position based on your works now. Then the Bible tells us here, verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. For if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. We find out here that there's three things that last, gold, silver, and jewels, precious stones. Other things that are wood, hay, and stubble, they're burned when your works are tried by fire. The gold represents God, the silver represents redemption, the jewels represent the people that are one and are taught during your lifetime. So it's an incredible thing here, you have a picture of the Trinity, God in the gold preserved in the form of a crown, Jesus Christ, the, rege the redemption that allows you to receive that crown, and then the people that you have won or taught in your lifetime, the jewels that go in that crown. Now there's at least five different crowns that you can win. And we're going to take a look at those. I know that it's going to be a lot of scripture turning, but this is Bible Baptist Church. Amen? <laughs> Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Again, that day is during that time when the believers stand before God himself and they're judged according to the works for the time that they were given on this earth to do something for Jesus Christ. And it says here, crown number one, a crown of righteousness. We find out that that crown goes to those who are faithful and long for the return of Jesus Christ. Now we know he's coming. We know that it's a sure thing. It's not guesswork. But even though we don't know when. We know it's a sure thing. So we are supposed to long. We are supposed to want. We are supposed to desire for him to come back. Amen. While you're reading your Bible during the week. You ought to think. Wow today would be a great day. For him to come back. While you're getting ready to go to sleep at night, you ought to think, wouldn't that be great if I woke up in glory? You're, you're, you're supposed to think uh, when you wake up and, and you're ready to go to work, uh, this could be the day. You know, the story of Lester Roloff when he was flying in his airplane and the, and the thing fell apart in the air and everyone in the plane died, uh, he said before he left, Boy, this would be a great day to meet Jesus. Crown number one, the crown of righteousness for those that long, and as the Bible says here, but not only them also, but that love his appearing. That's also something for us to think about because there's Christians that don't love his appearing. They love this world so much and all of its pleasures that uh, they don't care about Christ's returning at all. Let's go to crown number two. Turn over a couple more books to James. Hebrews, James, chapter one. James, chapter one, and let's read verse 12. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised 
to them that love him. Now we're going to talk about this a little bit, but let's look at, keep your finger here and let's look at Revelation chapter 2. The last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 2. Verse 10, Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So you have two things going here. In James chapter 1, verse 12, he says, you're going to receive the crown of life if you endure temptation, if you remain strong, if you don't cave in when you're tempted, when you're under the pressure to sin, and you do right, if you do that, you'll get the crown of life. But he also tells them in Revelation chapter 2, where we just read in verse 10, for those that are martyred for the cause of Christ they will also receive the crown of life. Now, isn't that interesting that God takes the, the element of time into effect? Many people ask about that. They say, well, why is it fair that one person in another country, he, he may be 12, 13, 14 years old and give his life for Jesus Christ because it's against the law to say anything over there in a Muslim country or whatever, and, and he gets the crown of life, but yet I have to suffer year after year after year after year after year and all these uh, uh, things that cloud our mind that try to overtake us. But the Bible says, hey, you can receive the same reward as the person that gave their life for the cause of Jesus Christ. Now that's all determined by God. And that's a good thing. Because God is, is always right. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He told that to Abraham, and the answer is, of course he will. But you see, God never said, I want you to die for me. He said, I want you to live for me. So number one, we have the crown of righteousness. We have the crown of life. And then we have the crown of rejoicing. Go to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Now this is the crown of rejoicing. This is called the soul winner's crown. This is talking about the people that you have won to the Lord that are represented in crowns, the people that are saved. Uh, let me give you a couple more verses here. Uh, Daniel chapter 12. Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They're shining like the stars. They're like the jewels. Turn to Malachi, the last chapter or the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. Malachi 3 Verse 17, the Bible says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, 
and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Now I know doctrinally this is applying to the nation of Israel, but here you also have the illustration of the people that we have uh, led to Jesus Christ through his righteousness that they are saved. Turn back one book, just a couple pages, to the book of Zechariah, chapter 9. Zechariah, chapter 9. And let's read verse 16. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign unto his land. So we're talking about the crown of righteousness. We're talking about the crown of life. We're talking about the crown of rejoicing, the soul winner's crown. Again, this is represented by the people that are saved, just like a crown of thorns represents a curse brought on this world by the fall of sinful man. A crown of life or, or a martyr's crown, we've talked about that. Now let's look at number four. Please go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. We were just in the book of James. Now let's go one more book over to 1 Peter. Chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Here we have the crown of glory. This is sometimes referred to as a pastor's crown, or an elder's crown. It is for those that specifically feed the flock. Remember, he told Peter three times, if you love me, I feed my sheep. This is for those that feed the flock. Now, let's look at one more tonight, the incorruptible crown. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, please. First Corinthians chapter 9, we'll begin with verse 25. The Bible says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, that now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So there, I therefore so run not as uncertainty, certainly so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We're talking about an incorruptible crown known as the victor's crown. And you get this crown for faithfulness. Faithfulness. When the Lord returns, he will look on the earth for faithfulness. Please turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and let's look at verse 5. 2 Timothy 2, 5, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Hey, we can't live the Christian life any way we want to. We have to be faithful and do it God's way according to His law, according to His instruction. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at one other verse. Please turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 11, verse 11. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It says, Let no man take thy crown. Well, you know, you have three things against you. The world, the flesh, and the devil. It tells us that in the book of 1 John. The world, pleasures and allurement, 
are portrayed by people. We find out the flesh. The flesh is you. You know, the biggest problem that you have is not the devil riding your back. The biggest problem that you have is the guy in the mirror. And then the devil, he's portrayed as a man in Isaiah chapter 14. So when it says, let no man take thy crown, he's saying, be careful of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Why? Because if you listen to that man, whoever it happens to be, you're going to lose crowns over it. Now that was all introduction. We have a few more verses that we're going to look at. I hope you're not tired yet. I'm going to give you some verses here. They're in a progression. And then we're going to talk about them for just a few minutes. I promise you, I'm not going to hold you long. I, I'm, I'm over half done now. But let's look at these. They're very important to your Christian life. Let's turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. While you're turning to Luke chapter 4, I want to remind you one more time, we're talking about crowns tonight. We're talking about the crown of righteousness. We're talking about the crown of life. We're talking about the crown of rejoicing. We're talking about the crown of glory. And we're talking about the incorruptible crown, the victor's crown. But I want to ask you a question tonight. My question to you is, what will you throw? What will you throw? At Luke chapter 4, let's read verse 29. The Bible says, And rose up, and thrust him out of the city, and led him onto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Here's a group of people here that they want to get rid of Jesus. They didn't like his words. They, if he was living today, they didn't like the preacher that used the Bible, the one that just told stories that, that made him feel good. That's the one that they liked. But the one that gave him the word of God, they didn't like him. Let's get rid of him. In fact, let's get him out of town right now. I know a cliff that we can throw him over and bust his head and get rid of him. There's people like that in Columbus. You go up there to Ohio State University and you start talking about Jesus Christ and there's people that would kill him again, crucify him all over again if they could get their hands on him. Now let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Let's go to the last verse. John chapter 8. Verse 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Now again, this is progressive. Here you have a group of people, they just hate Jesus. And, and if they could kill him with their bare hands, they would. But then there's some people that... They just, they just don't believe in him. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's the problem for many of the things in our nation right now. If we could just get, get rid of Jesus, we could all get along. That's what they try to tell you. And, and we don't really want to hurt him, but we don't believe in him. So let's just put him down in a pit and we'll all grab a stone and we'll throw it at him. And whatever one hits him and kills him, nobody really even knows. But we just want to get rid of him. You know, there's people like that that you work with. They don't hate Jesus. They just don't believe what he said. Now, let's go to chapter 19. Chapter 19, John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verse 24 The Bible says, 
They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things, therefore, the, sto- the soldiers did. So again, you have one, peop- one group of people that they want to literally grab Jesus, take him by the neck, throw him, and kill him and get rid of him. Then you have another group of people, they just really don't believe on him, but they think he's a troublemaker, and so they don't want to be the one that actually does the killing, but they don't mind participating in getting rid of Jesus. And now you have a group of people here that says, we're just going to cast lots. It's, it's uh, hey, if you go to heaven, uh, that's, that's not up to you, that's up to God. When your number's up, hey, you're, you're going one place or the other, who really knows? It's a bunch of luck. You know, that's the way some people live their lives. Well, the Bible might be true. I don't know. Um, Yeah, I go to church. I think church is good. What do you think? But they're not a part of it. You see, when people gamble, you realize most people are losers. No, it, don't, it doesn't matter what they put on the sign there about going to the Hollywood Casino. If you go there, you're going to lose, all right? I'll make it easy for you. Save your money. But that's the way people are concerning life and things of eternity. Well, it's just guesswork. Who really knows? You know, man did write the Bible, you know. Who told, who told you that? Is that what God told you? Or did some man that was a loser himself tell you that? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, and let's read verse 35. Verse 35. The Bible says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. So you have people that want to kill Jesus and get rid of him, throw him over the cliff. Then you have those that don't believe him, and they just want to cast stones at him. Then you have those that they'll just cast their lots, they'll just uh, gamble with life. But then you have those that receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and he says here, for those of you that are saved, those of you that truly know him as your Savior, cast your confidence in him and trust Christ. Why? Because there's great recompense of reward. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And we'll begin reading with verse 10. And the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Here you have a group of people in heaven, Christians that are saved and they're casting their crowns in victory To Jesus. My question tonight to you is, what will you throw? Are you on the side that that wants to get rid of Jesus? Or are you on the side that now trusts Jesus and you need to cast your confidence on him? It's a wonderful thing. Now let me go through these a little bit. I'm just going to... Say a couple more comments and then we'll be done. I want to tell you, instead of casting Jesus out, instead of casting stones at him, why not get saved? There's some of you that have been questioning that and thinking about that for years. Now, if Jesus had 12 disciples and one of them wasn't saved, I'd be silly to think that there's no one in here tonight that isn't uh, 
that, that were 100% all Christian here tonight. The time to get saved is now while you still have time. So stop casting out Jesus out of your life and ask him to come in and be your personal savior. That would be the right thing to do. Rejecting him once again would just be more sin on your pile and it would be, and, and, uh, be even harder the next time. There is no better time to get saved than tonight. Number two, Christians, your works are going to be tried by fire. All of you, are are going to be tried by the fire that we just read about in Corinthians, and the Bible says that there's gold, silver, and precious stone, but also says wood, hay, and stubble. You know, some of you are spending way too much time in wood, hay, and stubble. There's some things that have to be done. But listen, that is not the emphasis of your life. You need to take a look at your life seriously. And I don't know you. I don't know the things in your life, but you do. You know where your time is going. We all have 24 hours. What is it? We all have 168 hours in the week. It's it's all going somewhere. There, there's some of you that really what you're doing is when we talk about wood, hay, and stubble, you're putting all your time into rocks, wood chips, and cow food. You say that's not very nice. I, I'm just asking the question, what are you going to throw? You, you still have time to make a change. Start caring about Jesus and start doing something with the time, the talents, and the abilities that he's given you. Please turn to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, and let's take a look at verse 23. Jesus saith unto him, we're in Mark 9, 23, Jesus saith unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. There's too many people in our congregation here tonight that think you have little value for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is wrong. I want to tell you, you have great value for the Lord, but quit thinking, oh, I'm not worth anything. You're, you're worth uh, Christ dying for. You, you have abilities, you have things that God put in you that make you special, that Jesus made you the way you are for a certain reason. Now start channeling those things for the Lord Jesus Christ instead of for self. This year, while we're in the middle of summer, while it's burning up, we have got to stop deciding, we have got to stop guessing whether Christ is going to work for us. It doesn't matter whether it's cold outside, it doesn't matter whether it's burning up outside, it doesn't matter if it's beautiful, it doesn't matter if it's rainy, it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing, that doesn't matter at all. Why? Because that's wood, hay, and stubble. You have a job to do, and your job is to portray Jesus Christ in your life. If that means working hard at your job, then work hard as unto the Lord. Don't work for the dollar bill. That's a trap. Yes, make as much money as you can so that you can give blessings to your family and help your local church, but don't work that way. Work as unto the Lord. It doesn't matter what comes, disaster, sickness, sadness, or pain. Jesus knows all about it. There was a tennis player years ago uh, by the name of Jimmy Connors. Some of you may remember him. But they asked him why he was so successful. And he responded, because I hate losing more than I love winning. 
It really bothers me, the fact that I'm going to stand before the Lord Jesus someday and somebody might give me the old, I don't want to be a loser in front of the Lord. I want to get that victor's crown. I want to get those other crowns. I want to get as much as I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. And why? Because he deserves my all. And he's already paid for me. So I, what less could I do? The Christian life is not a life for losers. It's a life of victory. But that is going to determine what you will cast. How you live your life now is what you will cast before Jesus. On purpose, we have got to get some victories in our life. Those of you that are plagued with various sins, and again, I don't know what they are. To me, you're just my friend. But listen, the things that you face, the things that you face, the things that you face, the things that I face, listen, we have got to get some victories this year. But we do that by preparing and fighting and winning. Amen. Hebrews said, cast not away your confidence. Don't live in fear and apprehension. Live your Christian life. Go all out for him. Go pedal to the metal. When I was, uh, now I, I know you don't understand this, but a few years ago when I played running back, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> They used to call that go reckless abandon. You know, if you are a running back, a tailback, and you play football, and you're worried about getting hurt, you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to get hurt. We have too many Christians worrying about if they're going to get hurt. Oh, Brother Yoder, you can't believe what that family did to me. Really? 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 You sure about that? Oh, but it hurt so bad. I know it did. And, and believe it or not, it, it was supposed to. It was meant to. But when that comes, you're supposed to think of your Savior. You're supposed to get your mind off Christ, on, on Christ, not on whether or not you're going to do it again. No, you continue on. The faithful Christian, cast not away your confidence. The Bible also says, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. The reward will be worth it. A famous evangelist, and you would know him if I mentioned his name, he came to a preacher one time and he said, I just can't continue being an evangelist. I just can't do it. I don't have any confidence to do what people are asking me to do. I'm afraid to get up in front of people. Uh, it, I just I can't do it. And the preacher responded, that's not the problem. The problem is the little confidence that you do have, you have it in the wrong person. Oh, what can I offer Bible Baptist Church? You can offer Bible Baptist Church a lot. But you get your confidence in Jesus Christ instead of yourself. You keep that confidence in yourself, and the Lord's going to have to whittle you down to where he can use you. I'd just as soon get on my knees and say, God, please take me now. Amen. That man's still an evangelist today. How you care is what you'll cast. Serve him with your whole heart. Don't serve Christ on a whim. You know, you hear about that uh, phrase, firecracker Christians. You know, they get saved. What are we going to do next? And they come to soul winning one time. Where was everybody at? And then pssst, they fizzle out. Hey, how about the guy that does that for 20 years, 30 years? That's what we're looking for. Let's go to one other place and then we're finished. You've been so kind to me tonight and listening. I appreciate that. Please turn to Revelation chapter 10. Let's look at that section one more time. 
Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. The Bible says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Thou hast created all things. You know who created you? God. And you are for his pleasure. Now let's see how that thing works out. In Revelation 4.10, the 24 elders cast their crowns before Jesus. Who are they? Well, exactly, I do not know. But I do know that they represent the saved of all mankind. Ten, you have 12 patriarchs in the Old Testament. You have 12 apostles in the New Testament. 12 and 12 equals 24 it represents the saints of all mankind. And the scene, it's a wonderful one. They're around the throne and the greatest spiritual beings in the universe are there, and they're honoring and they're worshiping their creator, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, saying, holy, 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 worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. And then the men around begin to join in, and they begin to say what, it's, what is said in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And they all begin to cheer for Jesus Christ. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the one that has power. Worthy is the one that has wisdom. Worthy is the one that has riches. Worthy is the one that has strength. Worthy is the one that has honor. Worthy is the one that has glory. Worthy is the one that has blessings. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. And they begin to cast their crowns as they pass by in front of Jesus Christ. Hey, look, there goes the Old Testament saints. There goes Abel, the first martyr. There goes David, and there goes Samson. Then the New Testament Christians come, Peter and Paul and Philip the evangelist. Look, now it's the early church that's passing by. There's Christendom and Tertullian, and Justin the Martyr, and Polycarp. Now, it's the time of the Great Awakening of Wycliffe, and Savonarola, and Martin Luther. They're passing, and they're casting their crowns before Jesus. Just look at those crowns. Look at them all come in. Then comes the time of the great revivalists in the 19th and 20th century. Jonathan Edwards, the Wesley Brothers, Whitfield, Billy Sunday, and Sam Jones. Wow, what a wonderful time. Just look at those crowns begin to pile up for Jesus Christ as the people around are saying, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, and the crowns are being cast. Finally, the great church builders and soul winners in the last 50 years. Jack Hiles comes in, uh, Harold Henniger comes in, Carl Hatch, Lester Roloff, our pastor Stan Slayball, and other great soul winners. Then all the focus changes, and it's on you. What are you going to cast? Now, I don't know when Jesus Christ will return, but I do know this. I know that heaven is nearer than ever before. Nearer our Father's house, where the many mansions be. Nearer the believer's judgment throne, nearer the crystal sea. Nearer the end of life, where we'll lay our burdens down. Nearer the leaving the cross, and nearer gaining a crown. But you know, we're not all going to have crowns. You're only going to have crowns if you were faithful. You're only going to have crowns if you resisted temptation. You're only going to have crowns if you fed his sheep. And you're only going to have a crown if you've been faithful. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for looking at your word. 
And Lord, we've looked at dozens of verses tonight to help these people. And Lord, we prayed for your help. Let me ask everyone a question. If you are 100% sure that you're saved, there's no doubt in your mind that you're on your way to heaven. Would you please raise your hand? Thank you. You can put your hands down. How many would say, Brother Yoder, I'm not really sure. I, I don't know whether I'm going to heaven or not. I'd like to, but I just don't know, to be honest with you. Would you pray for me? If that's you, would you put your hand up, and I'll pray for you. Thank you. You can put your hand down. Anybody else? Say, Brother Yoder, I'm not sure, but I'd like to be sure. Let me pray for you. Thank you. How many would say, Brother Yoder, thank you for that message. I believe that I could work a little bit harder on getting crowns for my Savior. If that's you, would you put your hand up? Thank you. Thank you. Hands all over the room. You can put your hands down. Now tonight, I know I've given you a challenging message, and I didn't mean to hurt anybody, but I want you to take it serious right now. When I give the invitation, I'd like you to come forward and ask the Lord, by his strength, casting your confidence on him, that he will help you to be the kind of Christian that he wants you to be. Nobody beside you knows what you're coming for. I don't know what's com what you're coming for and what's in your heart. But I am asking you tonight if you'd come forward and pray and ask God to help you. Heavenly Father, you saw the hands of those that are not saved. And I'd ask, Lord, that you'd help those that said they want to be better Christians for you so that they can win more crowns for you. Please help them to do what's right tonight. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand in the building and Bob sings for us. I wonder have I done my best for Jesus. If God spoke to you, just come forward. Don't wait on your neighbor. Cruel tree to You'll cast your crowns for the labor that you have done. I know my Lord expects the best from me. How many are the laws that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? You say, Brother Yoder, if I come forward, I don't know what to say. I well, let me help you. I tell tell the Lord Jesus, Jesus, I want to be serious about my Christian life. And I need you to guide so me because I want to get all that I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that I am nothing. I realize he is everything. Please help me. And I promise you, he will. I promise you by his word, not by me, by his word. my lack of love for Jesus, I wonder if his heart is breaking too. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me? He's singing, I wonder have I done my best for Jesus. You know, I don't have to think about that too long. I already know I haven't. But I know I could do better, and I want to do more. I don't want to be the same Christian that I was five years ago. I want to be a better one. As he sings, sing with him, but more than that, mean it in your heart. Let's sing one more verse, Bob. I wonder, have I cared enough for others? Or have I let them die alone? I might have helped a wonder to the Savior, the seed of precious life I might have sown. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the 
the chain I've helped to free. I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. Thank you. Amen. That's great. That's uh, a wonderful, wonderful message. Timely and uh, essential. Let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll uh, then our, we'll sing our song of dismissal. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for just being so good. We thank you for your precious Word and how clearly it was presented uh, this evening. Lord, we we pray that we would be striving to have these crowns, obtain these five crowns to throw at your feet. How not just humbling, but humiliating it will be if we have nothing to give to you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to do our best for you. Lord God, I pray that as we go our separate ways, that we wouldn't just let this soon be forgotten, but you would permeate our hearts, Lord. You would just uh, continue to work on us throughout the remainder of the week. Lord, I thank you so much for your precious word. Pray that uh, you would just uh, continue to use it. Well, I thank you for this evening. Thank you for being so good to us. In Jesus' precious and holy name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's sing a uh, higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Let's sing that first together. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. You are dismissed. We'll see you Sunday morning.